Hello, everyone, and welcome back again. My name is Keith Gebhardt, and in this lecture, we are going to discuss segments, packets, and frames. Segment, packets, and frames are the terms we use to describe our headers for the data encapsulation process. As we learned earlier in this course during our network architecture lectures, our segment is our layer 4 header, our packet is our layer 3 header, and our frame is our layer 2 header and trailer. So far in this course, you've been slightly introduced to the encapsulation process, and as we have moved forward in this course, I have continuously added a little bit more of information on the subject to start filling you in on the details details of the data encapsulation process. In this section, we're going to take a real good look at how we are learning all the information in our segment, packet, and frame, and then we will further look at how it is communicating across our network. As a bonus, I will also provide you with some example questions that will be similar to the questions you will be asked on your Cisco certification exams. Operation. Now, this is not an official term that you will see in any textbook or online literature. I use it because I feel it helps my students learn the encapsulation process at an earlier stage of their studying. I consider the application layer, which is our layer 7 on our OSI architecture model, the operational layer because those application protocols are the protocols supporting the end user on our computers. If the end user needs to access a website, well, then layer 7 needs to perform an operation. It needs to establish that HTTP connection, right? Right. Well, along with that connection, it also has a other data associated with it. For this course, we will not be worried what exactly that data entails, but just looking at the green box up here, we could see that this is our application layer data block. Now, this is where the data encapsulation actually begins. Our segment is our layer 4 transport layer header and uses the transport layer protocols, either TCP or UDP, to establish a connection. But first, before TCP or UDP can establish a connection, it needs to know the port number information of the device we are connecting to. Since the layer 7 data block told us we are using HTTP, we know our destination must use port 80. Our computers will choose a port anything over 1024. It then takes the TCP source and destination port numbers and puts them in a header, which you could see there in the yellow. That then encapsulates all of the application layer information, which right now is just the HTTP protocol and data associated with it. Our packet is our layer 3 network layer header, and it uses the network layer protocol information to know where the data is being sent across our networks. It uses the IP protocol with the source and destination IP address information to know where to send the data. Remember that our routers are layer 3 devices, and really they only concern themselves with the IP addresses when it comes to needing to know where to send those packets through different networks. The source IP address is the address of the computer sending out the request for a connection to another network device. The destination IP address will be the address of the target target network device we are trying to establish a connection with. All of this information gets put into the packet header and encapsulates all the previous data. The source and destination IP address never changed during our data communication process. Finally, we have the last step in our encapsulation process, which is our layer 2 frame. The frame uses our data link layer protocol, which is the Ethernet protocol, and uses the source and destination MAC address information to fill the header. The source MAC address will be from the sending device, and the destination MAC address will be from the device receiving the frame. The source and destination MAC address information go inside our frame header and encapsulates all other data. The frame also receives a trailer which contains an FCS field which is our frame check sequence field and it is used for guaranteeing there were no transmission errors as our data traverses the network. Now, the very last step is what we call the transmission process. Again, like the operations part I mentioned earlier for the application layer, this transmission part is not a necessarily known term, but it helps keep the entire process in perspective because this is the point in the entire process which all the bits of data, all those binary ones and zeros are being sent out of our network interface cards and sent to the wire to another network device. One thing I want to bring to your attention is even though we keep adding these different segments here and then we add our packet and then we add our frame. So we keep adding all this information to our what? Our data information. But you need to know that none of this is actually getting removed. So I made it more of an example as a representation in this way. And this is how we are going to reference it throughout the rest of this course. The only thing you need to pay attention to is how we take all this operational data, the application data and its protocol, and we just bring it right down. And then we encapsulate it with the header. So I'm just going to draw a little bracket here. This would in sense be our header. This would be our segment information encapsulating the data block. This is what we would call a data block. Okay, And I just want to put this into perspective because when you look anywhere else, you're probably not going to see it drawn out like this. This information, even this header right here, is going to get brought over this way, and the data block is going to get brought down over here, being all encapsulated into
into a new data block, which is the data block that is being encapsulated with our packet header. So this would now be the new header right here. But you can see how I kept this color coordinated where it's going down, straight down. Well, here how I drew that parentheses. This is still being put inside of this new data block and same down here. So this header will get brought down here and it's being encapsulated again. So this is now the whole new data block, all this information here with what? The new frame header, okay? It's important to know that because when you look at a real um, information from a PDU or the uh, information being sent through the network in a packet tracer or Wireshark, you're gonna see something that looks more like this to where we have our segment information here, we have our packet information here, and this is our frame information up here, okay? Now you're not gonna see down here how I have, you know, a source and destination MAC address, source and destination IP address, source and destination port number up here in the frame. That's just not how it works. But you can see you have the data block here and this will contain multiple amounts of bits depending on how much information are in these data blocks, right? And then down here in the packet, yes, we can still see we have our source IP address, we have our destination IP address, and then we have our data block again, which is, again, all this information coming up with just the new information being added to the header. And again, all this information gets put up in this data block with the frame header and information. Now here you can see the FCS field. This type field would usually be used for trunking. And we don't, we're not gonna really talk about the preamble at all in this course. Destination and source Mac you already know of. All this other information like your checksum, your IDs, your TTLs, we're not gonna worry about any of this information, okay? This is quite a bit more advanced than just for what you need to know for your CCNA. You will need to know a little bit about the checksum, a little bit about the type, and then obviously you'll need to know about your CCNA sequence and acknowledge numbers, your sync and windowing. Okay, so there are a few more things you will learn in a full CCNA course or if you take the course with me. But again, just to familiarize yourself with what's going on and just so you know that none of this information is getting removed when it's added, okay? Even though we're encapsulating information and adding a header to it, it's not getting deleted. So the easiest way for me to actually represent this to you guys is to show you that, okay, this is our frame this is our packet and this is our um, segment information, right? This would be TCP or UDP, source and destination IP, source and destination MAC address. This is our data block information. And again, this is our frame trailer because it needs that FCS for guaranteeing the delivery, delivery transmission process. One other thing I want to bring to your attention really quick before we finish this lecture is how we have only been seeing the communication of our packets going through a local area network, a single network. So here we can see we have two networks, which means what? We have a router here, so what's that mean? Routers separate broadcast domains, separate subnets, networks. So here we have two different broadcast domains, two different networks. So let's go ahead and say we are making a TCP connection and my computer is the source computer and it's getting a source port of 1030. He's gonna be HTTP with source or destination port 80 because that's what HTTP uses, right? So let's go ahead and draw out our segment. So first, we're gonna Going to use the TCP port source port of 1030. So source port for TCP is going to be 1030 and destination port is going to be 80. Now what about our packet? Well the source IP address is 4.10 so source IP will be 4.10 and destination IP will be 5.12. He's over here on the server. Now what about our MAC address? So we're going to use source MAC and destination MAC, SMDM for abbreviation. Well, when this computer needs to send out, remember that we have a default gateway and we're using this interface. And since we are in the 4.10 network, we're just gonna assume that it's 4.1 is our default gateway. Well, what's gonna happen is the computer is gonna look and see, okay, well, I'm trying to access the 5.12 network. He's gonna compare the subnet, right? And he's gonna say, well, it is in a different network. So he needs to reach his what to access a new network, his default gateway. So he's gonna use this MAC address for this interface to reach, that's gonna be his destination. So that 5101, 5 B01 rather, is gonna be the destination MAC address that is assigned to our frame. The source MAC address will be from our computer because that is the one we are sending from. But here is where you really need to pay attention. The router is only concerned about what? IP protocols, right? It worries about IP addresses. It doesn't really worry about MAC addressing at all. So when the router gets this frame, it needs to remove 
this frame so it could read the packet information because it needs to look at the IP information to determine which route it needs to take. Think of it this way. If this was another interface here with a 6.0 network, right? So this is a new network over here. If this packet went into this router, he's not just going to be able to send it right out the next interface on that router. He's got to really look at his routing table and determine which interface to send the packet out so it can reach the network it's destined for. Well, once the router knows this information, it's going to remove that, that frame. Remember, it's then going to go ahead and rebuild a new frame. So it's going to add a new frame with a new source and destination MAC address. This time, since it's going out this way, it's going to use the 5B02. So the new source MAC address will be 5B02, and the new destination MAC address will be 6C92. That's very important to remember. So just going through that one more time, when, a, when data communicates through a network, when it's got to go through a router, the router is going to separate broadcast domains. It's going to use the IP protocol. It's going to remove the what? The frame. It's going to look at the IP address information, know where it needs to go by looking in its IP routing table. And then it's going to rebuild that frame so it knows where it's going to on the local area network at layer two. OK, guys, very important concept. And we're going to take a look at this a little bit more. I just wanted to bring it to your attention now. So as we move forward and we start incorporating a few more routing devices you understand. So you got to see all the fun details for each of the three main parts of our data encapsulation process, which are our layer four segments, our layer three packets, and our layer two frames. Now you also learn that our data link frames will change when going through different networks. In the next lecture, you will see an animation I created, which will go from start to finish the entire encapsulation process, and you will be able to visually see how all this information is being learned and communicated across our networks. Now, if you have any questions, please use this time to ask your questions or leave your comments. And also, don't forget to check out Learn Tech Training on YouTube for free lectures, labs, and promotional offers for future courses we offer. I will see you guys in the next lecture.